Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create this beginner-friendly cute sloth using Procreate on your iPad. So let's get started. The first thing I do is create my rough sketch, and I like to use the peppermint brush in the sketching brushes. For this project, I'm actually only using the standard brushes that come with the program. There are lots of options for purchasing custom brushes, and if you have some other ones that you prefer to use, that's perfectly fine. So to start, you make this bean-like shape, uh, and easy arms and legs, and then just get the head the right size. If the head is somewhat large compared to the body, then it looks cuter, and that's kind of what I'm going for. And I just want to point out that if you're new to my channel, this is actually my first Procreate tutorial, and I mostly teach watercolor tips and tutorials. And if you are returning to my channel, you may be confused why I'm sharing a Procreate tutorial instead of my usual painting and drawing. Well, I have been wanting to expand my tutorial range by including demos of other art media. I actually enjoy painting with a lot of media, and since I have been really enjoying using Procreate, I thought it would be useful to share, and I hope you enjoy it. So I'm saying that this is a beginner-friendly tutorial because I am also a beginner with Procreate, at least compared to how long I've been using traditional media. So I only got an iPad just under a year and a half ago, and I really love using it for sketching ideas and color studies for my traditional. I've only actually done a handful of start to finish digital paintings, since most of them I do just use for setting up for my traditional paintings. But anyway, I believe that this tutorial is something that you can do even if you're just learning the program and are a beginner like me. The one thing that I am using that is not native to the app is an imported watercolor texture. And I'll show you how that looks in a... Um, so the paper's not required, but I just really like how the texture creates a more vivid painting that looks a bit more... So now that the sketch is done, I created a new layer, and I'm using the inking brush called Syrup. I like that it has a nice rough edge and it's easy to fill. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking this illustration up into sections. The reason I'm doing that and doing it all in separate layers is it's going to make it really easy for me to do the shadows and highlights later. So for one layer, I'm doing the rear front arm and back leg, the ones that are grabbing the branch with the, the claws. The head is another section, which will also be broken up into a few more subsections for the facial features and uh, mask and other colorings. And then the main body, which is this one that has the more uh, closer um, arm and leg and the full body. And I'll show you how easy it is just to do your shading when having all of these sections separate. So I'm working on the head and I'm doing the black, or I should say the dark fur masks around the eyes. This is also on a separate layer. That way I can handle the um, highlights and shadows separately as well. And I'm just color filling and it's way too dark. So I'm just gonna make an adjustment to that color And if you noticed, I also have the outline on its, obviously on its own layer, but also at the very top, that would outline even as I add these colored in areas. So this light part of the face, I'm also doing in its own layer. And you see that it's hidden behind the black or dark fur eye masks because 
is stacked so that it's behind the dark eye mask. So now I'm looking at everything all together. Now I'm going to do the eyes also on its own layer. And in this case, I hid the outline because I don't want that distracting from me getting the final shapes of the eyes. And then once I have the white part and I do the black part, the pupil, I should say, um, and then I'm using my two fingers to create a ellipse. You just keep your fingers held onto the screen as you make that circle shape. Fill it in. I'm going to fix this little uh, rough edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this eye. It's so much easier than having to recreate it exact on the other side. So I duplicated it, I flipped it, and now I'm just moving it into the position that I want it. And now I turn back on the outline just so I can see how it looks with the other features that I had previously sketched. I'm doing the highlights differently because I don't want those to be mere images just based on how lights catch the highlight, or how eyes catch the highlight, rather. All right now, a new layer for the nose. And that's going to be a little dark, so I'm going to fix that as well. And make it a little darker for the nostrils. I could copy and paste the nostrils as well, but I thought it'd be easy enough just to try to wing it. Now for the mouth. I'm still using that same syrup brush. So you see the texture now? You can see that watercolor texture coming through underneath that illustration. And what I need to do, now you can use your uh, wheel to select a color that you're already using if you need to make an adjustment, but you should turn off the watercolor paper texture because that texture and the bumps create different colors within that, um, that area. So by turning off the watercolor texture, you just get that pure color, then it's easy to make your adjustments. Now I'm using my lasso tool, or, or I should say selection tool, to draw around these mask areas, and I'm just kind of shifting them around till they look the way I want them. And that's another good reason to have each element on its own layer, makes it really easy to separate them as needed. Just using my eraser. Now turning on the body layer just to so I, just so I can adjust that one as well. I'm going to fix this leg here. Looks a little wonky. So I'm just tidying up my basic shapes here. So 
now I have a lighter color and a new layer and I'm going to create claws. I'm going to create a few more little tufts of fur on his head here. Still using the syrup brush. I just made it a smaller size. and I'm just, just filling in and perfecting that shape. And I'm lightening the mouth a little bit here and fixing that as well. And you can see the texture with the watercolor paper on versus off. All right, now I'm going to work on the tree. Yeah, that's too big. And it's also in its own separate layer, so it's fine just to draw right over the sloth because I can hide those, those, uh, those sections later by the way that I stack the layers. Fill that in, make some adjustments. So I take the tree and I move it down so that it's in front of, or I should say behind the claws and the front arm and leg, but it's not behind the very back uh, paws, if that makes sense. So there's the paper texture off just so I could use that same color and make a correction. Now this is another, imp I'm gonna say important step in this illustration, if you, because if you don't do it at the right time, you won't be able to do it. It's the Gaussian blur. And you do that layer by layer, and all it does is create just a subtle bit of softness along the edges and it's completely up to you if you like that on the style, but you need to do that before you add your highlights and shadows because otherwise those will also... This will be a little bit more clear coming up. And I'm only doing Gaussian Blur about two or three percent, so it's still pretty subtle. And it's a little hard to see on the camera, but it does make a difference. A little bit more fine tuning here. And now it's ready for the highlights and shadows. This is my favorite part because it really helps bring some dimension and bring this character to life. So now that we have each section that we want Gaussian blurred taken care of, then now we can do our shading.
And the way we do that is each layer we're going to lock. And for the texture, I'm choosing this willow charcoal. I think it gives it a really neat uh, colored pencil look. And what you do is when you alpha lock on a layer, it means that it will only appear on that layer. So it's not going to end up on the background. It's not going to end up on any of the other layers. So that's why when I set these up as separate layers in the beginning, it's for this step to make it really easy to treat each area as its own section to give shadows and highlights to. So I'm just picking a sh shade or two lighter than the main fur and a shade or two darker. I'm not being super um, particular about it. I'm just, um, just seeing what looks good. Whatever I don't like, I can undo or go over it with a bit darker or lighter shade in, in subsequent um, passings. See, I forgot to do the, the alpha lock on that section, so it started to go um, out of bounds. But just really easy to undo and correct and move on. Now you see I did just merge a couple layers there. just because they didn't need to be separated. And you'll notice that, if, especially if you're doing larger, more complex illustrations, uh, you're gonna need to combine some of your layers, uh, depending on the model of iPad you have and how many layers it allows you. But this is just the 10th generation. I don't have the Pro, so I'm limited to the amount of layers I can use. So as soon as I know that I'm done manipulating some of them, then I can combine them and then it saves me some space. Okay, now I'm doing the rear legs, put them on alpha lock. And here I'm using an even deeper color for the shadow just because they are more in the distance. And it just makes it look a little bit more realistic. And this is the reason that you do the Gaussian blur on the main blocked layers first before you do the shading. Because if I were to do it now, it would just remove all of that texture of the charcoal and it would blur everything. So I'm adding a little bit more blur to those claws. adding a bit of shadow to the tips and highlights to the top. And did alpha lock on the branch. And we're going to find the right colors to use for the highlights and shadows for the branch as well. So if the light source is above the sloth, then I'm adding the highlights to the upper topward facing uh, trunk and branches and then the darker shadows will be on the bottom. Making it extra dark around where the claws are around it. I want to add a, a little bit more warmth to the main body. So I'm just picking a bit of a brighter reddish uh, color. I'm letting it blend a little bit into the highlights and shadows as well to create a little bit more cohesiveness. And just, just having fun bringing this little guy to life.
final step is to pick a background color and I'm going to go with a light bluish green to complement the Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more art tips, techniques, and tutorials. I would love to know if you'd like to see more Procreate videos, and if so, what subjects would you like to see? Until next time, happy painting!